Hey guys, today we're going to start the cardiovascular system and I want you to think about the cardiovascular system. Um, we talked about that it's for transportation and I want you to think about it like a busy factory that um, during rush hour. Okay, so lots of cars are coming in, lots of cars are coming out. Um, the comparison of a very busy factory to our body, there's still a lot more activity that goes on. Um, and a lot faster pace on our body than than at this busy factory okay but night and day um, the cells are constantly making exchanges of nutrients waste products bringing in more oxygen um, to keep this to keep our body alive okay so similar to a factory it's constant moving around there's constant cars going in and out on shift change um, so if we're thinking about that then we're going to think about our um, the major function, the major goal for the cardiovascular system is transportation. That vehicle, I want you to think about as blood, okay? And the transportation carries, uh, or the transportation system carries, our cardiovascular system carries oxygen, nutrients, um, cell waste, hormones, um, and just lots of things that keep our um, body in balance with homeostasis okay so our heart is at the very center of our cardiovascular system also called circ circulatory system but it beats which creates that force that pushes the blood throughout the body okay on this picture you can see um, the paths that the blood takes and if it's red it means it's oxygenated if it's blue it means it's deoxygenated and you can see it going through the body um, the heart is is the core of the cardiovascular system, like I said. It's approximately the size of an adult fist, okay? Um, it's hollow. It's kind of cone-shaped. It's a muscular pump, okay? That's how it keeps us going all day long. But despite it's the force that it can produce and the activity that it does and the importance of it to our um, life, it still only weighs less than a pound. It's located obviously in the mediastinum, okay? Um, surrounded by a lung on each side. When we're looking at the heart itself, okay, and we're looking at the heart walls, we have some different components. We have epicardium, pericardium, and then we have um, serous fluid. When we're looking at the um, pericardium, the the purpose or the function of the pericardium is to protect the heart okay it is a double walled sac that circles the heart on the um outside of that we have um the what we call the fibrous pericardium okay so it's just kind of a loosely fitting it's sup really superficial around it's on the outside of the um pericardium. It anchors to the diaphragm and the sternum, okay? And then the pericardium kind of loops around and lines the, the outside heart wall, okay? So that's what we call the serous pericardium, that, or sometimes it's referred to as visceral pericardium, okay? But it is very slippery, and it's, um, it's got two layers, okay? If we're thinking about um, the heart, we've got the heart, and then we've got the, the serous uh, pericardium, and then we've got the fibrous pericardium on the outside. If you think about um, taking a balloon that's not blown up super well, and you take your fist, and you kind of push your, fi your fist into that balloon, the lining of the part of the balloon would circle around your hand. Okay, that would be that serous or visceral pericardium. And it would be touching your hand, touching your, your heart. And then it would kind of loop on itself. And the outside would be that tough layer of the balloon, which would be the um, fibrous pericardium. Then we have the epicardium, which is actually part of the heart wall. And then we have the um, serous fluid. Okay, like anything else, we have 
This would be our heart. And then we have this visceral pericardium, which is right up against the heart. Okay. And then, then it loops around and we have the parietal pericardium or that fibrous pericardium. In between the two layers of pericardium, um, like if we're thinking of our balloon again, we have in between those two layers, we have a lot of air, right? So in that, in this, in the example, of, or when we're looking at the actual heart, that is fluid between there, okay, which protects um, the two layers from friction and rubbing when the heart's beating. So if the heart's beating, the the layers would be rubbing against each other if we didn't have the serous fluid to keep them separated and pro provide that um, lubrication between the two layers. When we're actually looking at the heart wall, okay, the very outer layer of the heart wall is epicardium. And then the middle layer is what we call myocardium. And myo means muscle, remember? So that's actually the heart muscle, okay? And then endocardium is that very innermost layer. When we're talking about each of those layers, um, the myocardium are um, thick muscle, thick bundles of cardiac muscle that are kind of in a ring-like arrangement. Okay, this is the layer that is actually doing the contracting. And like I said, when we take the word myocardium, we have myo, which means muscle. Cardio, which means heart. Then we have the endocardium. This is a, a very thin layer that lines the heart chambers. Okay, so it's endo meaning within, cardio meaning heart. So it's within the heart. Um, this is where the blood vessels enter and um, leave the heart. The heart is made up of four different chambers. Okay, each chamber has endocardium, which allows that blood to, to flow uh, smoothly through the heart. Okay, so it comes in the atrium and flows down one atrium to the other, then flows down to the ventricles. When we're looking at the top chambers, okay, the superior chambers, those are called atria or atrium. Okay, um, they are the receiving chambers. So the blood is coming back into the heart. It's coming in um, just, I don't want to say gently, but it's coming in under low pressure, okay? And then it is not, like the atria doesn't, um, it's not very involved in the pump, the actual pumping activity of the heart, okay? And then it um, flows down the atria to the ventricles. The ventricles, on the other hand, are what pumps the heart because the blood comes into the into the heart into the atria comes down to the ventricle and then then it's expelled out into the body okay so the ventricles are what actually does the contracting to push that blood into circulation so the ventricles because like any other muscle um, they're very very thick okay if you think about um, our best um, jumper, okay, our best sprinter, and they have these massive quads, right? Because they they use those for for speed, for quick contracting, okay. Um, versus maybe a um, distance runner, our top distance runner, who runs at a steady pace. Okay, but isn't producing lots and lots of force. So those aren't as those their quads wouldn't be as as thick and developed. Okay, so the the ventricles are very very thick walled, um, and they're what we call the discharging because they're the what's pushing it out of the out of the heart. They're they're pumping and pushing the blood out of the heart into circulation. That is all for today. We will um, look at some more of the cardiovascular system on Tuesday. No, <laughs> on Thursday. Sorry, I'm getting my days all confused. Um, we'll finish that up tomorrow, and then um, we'll move on to respiratory system next week. I hope you're all doing well. Please let me know if you have any questions or any issues.